of the spongy tissue that fills the core of the larger bones. It serves an active function in the body by producing all three types of blood cells. Can anyone tell me what are these three types of blood cells? You can write in the chat box what are the three types of the blood cells which are produced by the bone marrow. Okay, so the uh, reply is RPC, WPC platelet. Very good. Very good, Hasna. So, as well as lymphocyte also produced by the bone marrow, which support the immune system. This is the marrow and it's producing the red cell, white cell, platelet, as well as the lymphocytes, which have a role in the immune system. These blood cells are the vital for the normal body function, such as oxygen transport, defense against infection and disease, and clotting. Blood cells have the limited lifespan and are constantly being replaced. And what is the definition of the bone marrow transplant? Bone marrow transplant is a procedure used to treat patients with a life-threatening blood immune or genetic disorder. A bone marrow transplant replaces the unhealthy blood forming cells with healthy ones. Healthy bone marrow stem cells are harvested from the matching bone marrow donors, actually matched donors. It involves extracting bone marrow containing normal stem cell or peripheral stem cell from the healthy donor and transferring to a recipient whose body cannot manufacture proper blood cell, proper quantity of the normal blood cell. The goal of transplant is to rebuild the recipient's blood cells and the immune system. And it is done in uh, many blood diseases like leukemias, acute myeloid leukemia, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, lymphomas, multiple myeloma, mild dysplastic syndrome, uh, aplastic anemia, some immune disorder like uh, skid immune deficiency disorders. Okay, some points about the history. In mid 19th century, marrow was the source of blood cell. It is just a chemical factor transferred by eating the marrow. They eat the marrow for transferring the blood cell. Then in 20th century, they formulate a small number of cells in the marrow might be responsible for the development of the oral blood cells. And they refer to them as stem cells. In 20th century, they refer to them as stem cells. And in 1950, first one was transplant was done. We are now coming to the types of transplant. There are the different types of transplant. Autologous means your own cells. Cells drive from own body, from the patient's body. Allogenic cells from the another person, like sibling, unrelated donor, parents, and third source is the umbilical cord stem cells. Autologous transplant, uh, in autologous transplant, sometimes the donor and the recipient will be the same person. This type of transplant is called autologous. Allogenic, the donor may be family member, sibling, or unrelated donor. And the donated bone marrow or the peripheral stem cell must perfectly match the patient's bone marrow. And matching process is called the HIV matching. Uh, this figure, uh, who may understand about the autologous autograph within an individual, isograph between the identical twin transplantation and allograph non identical but actually match uh, sibling, unrelated donor, family member. And what is xenograph when transplantation between the species? Just remember the name. Okay, what are the stem cells? A stem cell is a cell with a unique ability to develop into the specialized cell types in the body. They are the immature cell in the bone marrow take give rise to the all your blood cells. For example, this is a stem cell, uh, cell human cell. They can differentiate into the organ specific neural cell and the hematopoietic cells. And in the future, it will be used to support the replace the cell and tissue that have been damaged or lost due to the disease. 
Uh, this is a morphological picture of the stem cell. They are the CD34 positive. We now come to the sources. What are the sources? I've already discussed. Uh, they are the three sources of the transplant cells. They come from the peripheral blood stem cell, marrow stem cell, and the umbilical cord stem cells. Okay, these are the peripheral blood stem cell collection procedure. Okay. Peripheral stem cell collection blood is taken through the one cannula and the pump around the machine where the mononuclear cell, which are the stem cell, are collected by the centrifugation before the red cell and returned to the patient. Red cell returned to the patient and they collect the mononuclear cell. This continued process may take a few hours before enough mononuclear cells are collected. Can anyone tell me what is the GCSF? We gave the GCSF for three days to the donor to increase the cell count. What is the GCSF? Genocide, colony stimulating factors is given to the donors until the white cell count start to rise. And the peripheral blood cell collection are then taken and depending on the efficiency of the stem cell mobilization, repeated collection may be needed for up to three days. If design monoclonal cell not collected, you can repeat the procedure from the donor to collect the further mononuclear cells. This is the peripheral blood stem cell collection. CD34 positive cell count generally more than 2 to 10 pounds per kg are needed for the transplantation. This is a bone marrow collection, bone marrow collection of the stem cell. The donor is given in general anesthesia and 500 to 1200 ml marrow is harvested. This is the procedure harvested from the pelvis. The marrow is antipopulated and the mononuclear cell count is taken to assess the yield, which should be 2 to 4 into 10 to power nucleated cell per kg body weight of the rest. Field. These are the different uh, counts which we need for the transplantation. This is the bone marrow aspiration biopsy leading. This is the bone marrow and this is the skin and hip bone. They are taken from the pelvis, the bone marrow stem cell. This is the procedure of collection of the bone marrow transplant, uh, bone marrow stem cells. We discussed two procedures, peripheral stem cell collection from the peripheral vein and bone marrow stem cell collection from the pelvis, hip bone, through the uh, these needles. Now coming to the umbilical cord blood. Okay, first umbilical cord transplant was done 16 years ago, child with the continuous anemia. And after the collection of the cord blood, they cryopreserved the stem cell, but they collected only the small number of the stem cell. And in this umbilical cord blood, high incidence of the engrafting period due to the small number of the stem cells and but lower rates of GBHT because they have the small number of the T cell also. And this is a picture showing the umbilical cord blood collection. Peter blood is a rich source of the hematopoietic stem cell, which may be collected from the cord blood. Because of the relatively small number of stem cells collected from the single cord, they are most useful for children who do not have fully matching sibling or unrelated donor. Double coordination may be needed to obtain sufficient stem cells to for the other recipe. Okay, the baby is born with umbilical cord attached, the cord is clump, and the cord cut will be drawn from the clump cord into the spatial collection bag by the doctor. And the cord blood stem cell will be kept in a liquid nitrogen storage tank at the minus 190 degrees Celsius. I think we uh, don't have the uh, umbilical cord cut bank in our country. Okay, after the collection of the stem cell manipulation, 
uh, can be processed with the removal of the red cell and the concentration of the monoclonal cells. If you incompatible, if the donor and the recipient are have the different uh, blood groups, they are the able incompatible. You should remove of the iso A globulin antibodies or the red cells from the product of the stem cell. Should deplete the T cell to reduce the incidence of the graft process smooth disease. But if you more deplete the T cell, there will increase graft failure, increase relapse rate. And what is the in vitro purging in the case of the autologous collection should remove of the tumor cells and the positive collection uh, selection of the CD34 positive cell. Autologous collection means purged by chemotherapy and antibodies in an attempt to remove the residual malignant cells. An allergenic collection may be treated with antibodies to remove the T cell to reduce the graft versus wound disease. And CD34 positive cell may be selected from the fourth type of the harvest because they may need these cells uh, for the transplantation in both type, autologous and the allergenic. But should remove the red cell and antibodies to decrease the reactions between the able and compatible donors and recipients. For example, if the donor is an A and the recipient is a B blood group, they have the antibodies against both. So, the recipient, when they see uh, the, the different blood group, they also receive the antibodies from the recipient and then they cause the reactions due to these antibodies. Okay, these are the stamps of processing in the autorobus. The stamps are collected from the patient bone marrow out of blood and then processing of the blood or bone marrow process in the body to purify and concentrate the stem cells. Then they cryo preserve uh, the blood or bone marrow frozen to preserve it. Then give the high dose chemotherapy or radiation therapy to the patient to uh, remove the disease and then reinfuse the stored stem cell into the patient. This is the procedure of the autonomous stem cell processing. Uh, this picture shows the allergenic stem cell transplant donor. We give the GCSF to the donor to increase the WBC count. Then stem cells are collected from the patient bone marrow or the blood. Usually in adults, we collect the stem cell from the peripheral and the small child, we collect the marrow sample, marrow, marrow stem cells collection. Then bone marrow or the peripheral blood is taken to the processing laboratory where the stem cells and there is a removal of the antibodies and the uh, depletion of the T cells and then go to the prior preservation if there is no need of the uh, transplantation at that time. Bone marrow or blood as preserved by freezing to keep the stem cell alive and we should keep the chemotherapy or the high radiation to remove the malignant diseases. Then infuse the stem cells into the patients. What is the difference between the autologous and allergenic? Can anyone tell me what is the autologous and allergenic difference? Very good. Allergenic, everyone, very good. Allergenic is from the donor. We need the donor for the allergenic for transplant. And for the autologous transplant, Sidra said, autologous cell we need it. Donor and the recipient is the same. Very good. Very good. Okay. Okay, what are the indications for the bone marrow transplantation? If you have any question, then uh, you can ask in chat box. Otherwise, I will ask uh, the questions after the lecture. So be attentive.
Sayyid, I will answer you our, our brother lecture at the end of the lecture. You are right, patients susceptible to multiple infection. So we need the uh, here. Yes, Sidra. Uh, we gave the GCSF to the donor to increase these cells, WBCs, worldwide series, and we collect the stem cell. We counted the stem cells. If um, we need further collection from the donor, we can repeat the three procedure to uh, collect the desired dose of the stem cell. So we need the desired dose of the stem cell to infuse in the patient so they work in the patient's marrow, in the recipient marrow. Okay, these are the indications for the bone marrow transplant, some are the cancerous and some are the non cancerous cancerous condition. Cancerous condition are the leukemia, for example, acute minor leukemia and acute neoplastic leukemia, the results are more um, promising in the acute neoplastic leukemia, report of female leukemia, uh, had a different cytogenetics and diet prognosis. Lymphomas, different in different lymphomas, they can. A transplant the bone marrow in a younger patient in multiple myeloma with the uh, uh, who are the resistant to the drugs, myelodysplastic uh, syndrome, and non cancerous condition like eplastic anemia, pancreas anemia, hemoglobin hepatitis, thalassemia. Uh, we can transplant uh, the interferenia before the age of five years. So results were are good. But after five years or after 10 years, results are bad due to the repeated blood transfusion and uh, um, there is an increased iron overload in different organs. So maybe bad results can be seen with the repeated transfusion patients of the transplant. Immune deficiency disorder like the state, uh, severe combined immune deficiency disease, and condition affecting blood present from the birth, congenital diseases. Okay, what are the process of the transplant? What are the steps uh, for the transplantation? Uh, we have discussed the, what are the transplant, what is the stem cells, what are the sources of the stem cells, okay, peripheral uh, blood and bone marrow and umbilical cord. Then what are the different types of the transplant, ocrobus, arrogenic, and these are the most common types. And um, what are the indications? Now coming to the transplant process. What are the steps in the transplant process? What is the conditioning? When we give the chemotherapy and radiation to the patient to remove the disease, then stem cell infusion. After the stem cell infusion, we are going to do the phase. Uh, this is the answer to your question, sir. So, yeah. uh, after the radiation and chemotherapy, patient is susceptible to the multiple infection and he needs a cure. Uh, here and treatment with different antibiotic, antifungal, antiviral drugs. So there is a neutropenic phase, and after the neutropenic phase, the stem cell work, and fourth is the engraftment phase, when the your uh, patient cell count rises, and this is the engraftment phase, and after the fourth engraftment period. Okay, we have already discussed these things, collection, then processing of the stem cells, chemotherapy, and infusion. This is the extra picture, I think. Okay, first the conditioning period. The conditioning period typically lasts seven to 10 days. Conditioning, what is the conditioning? The purpose are to eliminate the malignancy, for example, in the leukemia patient or the lymphoma patient, first eliminate the disease. You can't uh, infuse the stem cell in the diseased person. 
The purpose are to eliminate malignancy to provide the immune suppression to prevent the rejection of the new stem cells and creating the space for the new cells. So before the bone marrow transplantation, recipient must be prepared for the transplant with the radiation and chemotherapy to deplete their own marrow cells and vacate these sites to allow the transplanted stem cells to the marrow and they establish themselves in the appropriate environment. Conditioning phase is to eliminate the malignancy by the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy. These are the different preparative regimen. Myeloablative, what is myeloablative treatment plan? Myeloablative is a high intensity stem cell transplant using the high doses of the chemotherapy and may use the radiation therapy to destroy the cancer cells. In this process, bone marrow stem cells are also destroyed and patients receive an increase of the new stem cells to rebuild the blood and immune systems. High dose of the chemotherapy, we give in the myeloablative and the radiation, total body irradiation. Three goals. What are the three goals? Eliminate malignancy, immunosuppression to allow engraftment, and decrease graft versus host disease. Most common adjuvin are used uh, cyclophosphamide and um, cyclophosphamide, useful form, and a total body irradiation and therapy based on the disease. Other drugs can be used, etoposide, cytopene, cytopene, and the malferan. Just remember, name myeloblative usually to use the cyclophosphamide and total body irradiation, useful form, and cyclophosphamide. Another conditioning is a known myeloablative for the allergenic stem cell are mainly immunosuppressive and less toxic to the recipient stem cell. They help minimize the toxicity for patients with prior orthodox stem cells. So the other two regimen myeloablative, high dose of the chemotherapy and radiation. And known myeloablative, there is a immunosuppressive drugs we can use in a known myeloablative drugs. Okay, second point is the stem cell processing infusion. Okay, you all know after collection of stem cells, we process the laboratory uh, to collect the desired count of the stem cells. Then when prepared product come from the laboratory, we can infuse, uh, they can infuse between 20 minutes to an hour, where it's depending on the volume infused. But in some patients, some allergy reaction, can you see? So, pre medication with the acetylamide and D fine hinder me to prevent the reaction. Okay, they infuse through the venous line, much like the blood transfusion. What are the reactions? And now, can be uh, anaphyte axis, volume ocular, and the rear transient GVG, the major potential complication involved in the, during the infusion. So they can infuse like a blood transfusion stem cells. And pre-medication are the acetaminophen and defined hydrogen to prevent the reaction, like the blood transfusion. Third point is a neutropenic phase. I already told you, we remove the malignant cell as well as the stem cells of the patient through the chemotherapy and radiation. So patient is a neutropenic. After the infusion of the stem cell during this period, two to four weeks, the patient essentially has no effective immune system. Healing is poor and patient is very susceptible to infection, like fever, like ulcer, uh, oral ulcers, and um, difficulty in swelling due to the ulcers. And uh, some uh, patient present with the PTKI bleeding, they need very careful management and the prevention through the antibiotic therapy. Support, they, they, they need supportive care, antibiotic therapy, antifungal therapy, antiviral therapy. 
through they can successfully pass through this phase neutrophilic phase is very critical phase uh, in the transplant process Fourth is the engraftment phase. During this phase, after uh, two to three weeks, the healing process begins with the resolution of the mucositis and other lesion acquired in the patient. And the fever begins to subside because uh, WBC begins to rise. Neutrophil cam uh, cam from the marrow and the infection often leads into failure. So the greatest challenge at this time are the management of the GBHD and prevention of viral infection. Because if the management is poor, so patient can be lost due to these viral infection and the GBHD. And viral infection, especially the CMV, cytomegalovirus. The engraftment phase is the phase of engraftment. WBC is raised, platelet, and the patient. Uh, resolve the anemia. Then post engraftment phase. Okay. This phase is the including the gradual development of the tolerance against infection, weaning of immunosuppression, management of the chronic GBHD, and documentation of the immune constitution. These are these are included in the post PMT, post bone marrow transplant care. Okay, some points about the graft versus home disease. Uh, if you have any question about the different phases of the transplant, you can ask. I try to simplify these phases, phases for you because it is a little bit a difficult for, uh, procedure of this cancer transplant, but I hope you all understand about the basic things of the bone marrow transplant. Yes, uh, GC said uh, you can give in the neutrophilic phase. So yes, after the eight weeks, after the eight weeks, the stem cells are uh, placed in the recipient marrow, and they work uh, work in the recipient marrow. You can give the GC said to increase the WBC count, but not before the eight days, because marrow is empty. Recipient marrow is empty due to the chemotherapy and radiotherapy management. So, if you give the GCSF in initial stage, there is no benefit. You can give the GCSF after the eight day of the stem cell infusion. It is beneficial for we uh, get the GCSF in our transplant patient after the eight day of the stem cell infusion. And many patients behave good, uh, beneficial for these patients to increase the WBC scum. Okay, some point about the graft versus wound disease we will discuss in the transplant rejection, uh, inshallah, on Thursday. Okay, uh, you all know we have the defense system uh, in our body. If the donor cell see the host cell at the foreign, Donated cells see the host cell, recipient cell is foreigner, so the donor cell will attack the host tissue. So they involve the skin, gut, and liver most likely to be affected. If it occurred before the 100 day after the transplant, it's called the acute graft versus host disease GBHD. And if it occurs more than 100 days after the transplant, it's called the chronic GBHD, chronic graft versus host disease. Other problems include hemorrhagic cystitis uh, due to the infection or the cyclophosphamide toxicity. We know of opposite disease of liver or solid organ syndrome, organ toxicity in the lung, heart, kidney, adipathic pneumonia syndrome. These are the other problems you can see uh, post in post transplant patients. We will discuss in detail in the transplant injection topic.
okay some point about the post bone marrow transplantation here okay you can't leave the patient after the transplant you watch properly and follow the patient uh, till the one to two years a uh, two to four week waiting period for the marrow transplant for its success can begin to be judged is the bone marrow transplant is successful or not the marrow vesicle is kept in isolation during this time to minimize the potential infection marrow vesicle is kept in isolation uh, after the discharge he kept in isolation after 6 uh, to 6 months to one year to prevent the different infection the recipient also received intravenous antibiotic to prevent the different infections and the viral drugs to prevent the viral infection like cmv herpes anti fungal medication uh, to prevent the fungal infection these infections can fail this transplant and we can lose the patient due to these infections and some patient need as well as the blood and platelet transfusion blood transfusion to treat the anemia low hemoglobin to treat the low hemoglobin we can give the uh, red blood red cells transfusion and the platelet transfusion in patient uh, whose platelet are decreased and patient can with the bleeding manifestation of the particular rash so these all things are needed to prevent these infections and the excess bleeding okay during the post bone marrow transplant uh, care the test performed daily uh, cbc complete blood count daily to see the hemoglobin uh, to assess the anemia to see the wbc count to see the neutrophil count mainly uh, to see the degree of neutropenia and the engrafting process and the platelet in the platelet it decreases patient may present with the bleeding and a particular rash and also monitor the patient kidney and liver function because they are using the different medication during the transplant and after transplant they can affect the kidney and the liver function and as well as check the nutritional status you can check the different levels b12 iron and folate level of patient to give the different nutritional supplements and other tests performed as necessary for example if there is any um, doubt of infection you can perform different cultures and different viral studies and in patient with the transplant we are using different drugs so they can cause the nausea and vomiting so nausea and vomiting can be treated with other medication like onset injection onset or other medication to treat the nausea and vomiting so they these patient need the supportive care and the symptomatic care and the preventive measures for the successful transplantation okay these are the references because this topic is not uh, in your textbook uh this is my mail id you can ask any queries and questions in my mail id but we have a time uh, almost 10 to 15 minutes you can ask the question in chat box i will give you answer and i i have also some questions for you so please ask question otherwise i will ask the question from you okay what are the objectives
Okay, I think you have no questions. Uh, you all are understand about the bone marrow transplantation. So I will ask some questions to uh, my wife about today's topic. Okay, can anyone tell me what are the stem cells? What are the meaning of the stem cells? Okay, progenitor cells. A brother, you can reply to everyone. Immature cell in bone marrow, Sidratu Muntaha. Very good. Okay, one question is from, uh, okay, what are the criteria for bone marrow donation? Okay, for the bone marrow donation, criteria is actually matching. In the autologous case, uh, recipient and donor are the same, so there is no actually matching is required, but in, in allergenic bone marrow transplant, there you should uh, need um, uh, actually matching. Sibling donor with the HLA match. If there is no HLA, we discuss the HLA matching in the transplant rejection. Uh, so you better understand about the HLA matching. We need 